Okay. We are back. Today is going to be a little different than normal. Because we got some, uh, got some people working in here today. So I'm going to keep it quieter and clean. But I, it, it came down to this choice. It came down to, am I going to play? Or am I not going to play? And I want to play. So we're stuck with a clean broadcast today, which is unfortunate, but that's what I need to do. See me exercise some restraint. So when we last left off, we had just gotten this fantastic airship here, and we are free in the world of ruin. We're going to save another file here for the reason that there are two approaches you can take to the end of this game. One of the approaches is a challenge approach where you basically, from this moment, you go beat Kefka with this many people, which is not the minimum. I could have skipped uh, Seven, but I did not skip him. But there will be a point where I probably attempt to kill Kefka with three characters. So when that point occurs, then it will have that save file right there to do that. And then we've got the initial save file right here, which is the one that we will be going on now. Um, at this point, you're free to beat the game, if you want to beat the game. But I am level 20, and that is not not a, an ideal level to beat the game at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get all the best items and uh, characters that I can, as quick as I can do it. So the first thing we're going to do is get Moog and some uh, other things out of Narsh. This is this music is insane. I hate the controls on this airship. Ah, nice. Yeah, the Discord can be very uh, convenient for that reason. Unfortunately, comp going to be one of the very rare clean broadcasts where I don't swear in it because there's too many people in the house right now. Yes, Kaio is excited. Yuna's excited. Everybody can come in here while I'm doing this. It's a, it's a brand new day. It's not going to be the norm. It's just it's what happens when you have people working at the house. Oh my god, D33PDIKN, you're not kidding, uh, me too, I'm doing the same thing, I'm trying to get all that paperwork and crap in order, it's awful, it's awful, it's damn near criminal, how, how difficult it is to get to Japan right now as a foreigner, and what you have to do, if you're gonna live there, it's a wholly different thing, it's all related to COVID, uh, then if you're gonna visit there, um, it, permanent residents have it better, but it is bad. And the the thing, if you don't follow the process, the punishment is severe. You get like jailed, pretty much. Oh, that's good, real Doctor Trend, because it did get deleted. It is gone um, from the from the past broadcast, and you know why. The good news is, I have saved it, so I have the raw file. So I have it, personally, so if you F that up and you can't get it up for people, I've still got it. So... so all the good stuff in this town needs lock to open it up. But we need to get this Moogle. I should probably be fighting these fights, because Run is broken in this. Actually, Japan had some of the least infection rates of the entire world, because they're unified, and unlike America, when people said, hey, put masks on, everybody did it. And when people said, don't 
go congregate, they really didn't congregate. So, um, part of the reason that they don't want foreigners going in there without all these rules is because they watched what we did, and we just got everybody sick. That's what we, that's how we handled COVID. So, um, there, there were two ways to go about it. There was either get everybody sick and the people who don't get the vaccine uh, get sick, or be unified, everybody gets vaccinated, everybody does the shit, and then and then what happens is uh, you have a lower infection rate, significantly lower. Look it up, it's ridiculous. Okay, so we're not going to be able to get into um, where we want to go here. We want to be in these weapon shops and armor shops, but we can't do that. But we can still get into the um, Moogle place, which is what we need to do. I need to be fighting these guys. It's... Japan's different. I, they, it's a country. It can't be smart. America's not smart. And Japan is not smart. They're countries. But, uh... Japan's different. That solidarity and that, um... That willingness to submit to authority, in the case of COVID, was very advantageous. It was a good quality to have. But in other cases, other situations, that quality is not good to have. It's different, literally, with every issue that you encounter as a nation, whether or not full-on conformity and unity, or um, the willingness to dissent and disagree is good or bad. So, just be aware that, that just because that they did that in a superior fashion for this does not make that approach to, to life superior at all times, if that makes any sense. But I mean, yeah, they, they certainly uh, were smarter about COVID, and we should have done that. I was saying from the beginning that we could have ended the entire pandemic in a month if we all would have taken the correct steps at the onset. If we would have just controlled the situation in the first month it would have been over and we didn't we all disagreed with each other and we messed it up and we didn't get the world to, to unify which would have been what we needed to do it would have gone away it would have literally been gone like SARS you can never have everyone's best interest in mind because oh so many times people's best interests are different. Wow, okay, we do not want to attack those things with fire. Mysidian, that's fire again. I'm doing the wrong thing. if I could be any less efficient fighting these very simple enemies than I am. They have more hit points than I remember them having. Got one, finally. catch a break with those guys, can I?
All right, Dave, a wave. I will do that. I will have a nice day. Yes, they are generally the ones that complain about it. That's a true comp. It's unfortunately true. Cheers, by the way. There's the drink of champions. I haven't even finished mine. Normally, I've consumed that by now. Our problems will be over as far as uh, getting constantly attacked by these enemies. That will be a thing of the past. There are um, some excellent mods for this game. I'm going to play it vanilla first, and uh, hopefully someone goes ahead and makes a randomizer for it. That's what I want to see happen. But it looks like even game variables can be controlled by mods, which is uh, excellent. And if no one else makes a randomizer, maybe after I retire I can do it. But we'll see about all that. But yeah, there are some very good mods for this, including one that changes the frame rate. I mean, all that sounds very intriguing to me. But I want to play it as, as is first. What the heck? I think this... Nope, they have enemies in this room now. Not having to heal all the time is amazing. Uh, this pretty much is the old school art style for the most part, and yes, I do. Uh, I played the mobile version, and that was uh, cute, but I prefer this, actually. And obviously, the Super Nintendo version of this is in many ways superior. Let me show you guys something really quick. Let me put that on auto battle, so you can see how hardcore of a uh, Final Fantasy VI fan that I am. I have this insanely rare thing. This is a sealed in-box version of Final Fantasy VI Japanese. Okay? I don't know how much this is worth, but it's sealed. Like, it, it's, it came from the game store like this. This is how it was sold. And I still have it. Never opened it. It's got a cartridge in there. I can feel the weight of it. And an instruction booklet and all of that. And it, I don't collect games like Fight Binge does, you know what I mean? Like, that's not my thing. I think games are meant to be played. But that's a piece of history in my house right there. And I'm keeping that. I, I'm going to give that to my kid when I'm dead, and it's not going to be open. And who knows what it'll be worth. But it's, it is a big piece of history. It's not Final Fantasy 1 unopened, obviously, but it's still something. I also have a copy of Chrono Trigger in the same condition in Japanese, so... Yeah, Byte actually knows he's seen that, and he doesn't care that much. He loves things that are unboxed and all that, or unopened uh, and all that stuff, but he, he does not um, care about Japanese games. So, just the fact that he can't read everything on the box is enough for him to not care. He's like, oh, that's nice. That's pretty much his reaction to that. He would much rather have some obscure Se Sega Saturn game or something like that than that one. It probably will. I can't imagine it won't. Uh, the value of Japanese retro games is lower than English ones, which is good. They're behind, um, as usual. But um, that will eventually change. And when that does... 
the uh, appreciation of unopened items will go up significantly. But anyway, the point is, despite whether it's worth this or that, I've got it. I have that piece of history. Right here. I got a flame rod from that guy. It's always nice. Those things are very convenient. Alright, so here's Moog. I don't believe we've listened to this tune, so let's do that. Uh, usually comp- Usually, when they farm it out to other developers, or when they try to make a cash grab, it's just the same as the US. Uh, and back then in the golden age of gaming, from the 1984 until 1999 or so, that, maybe I'd, I, I could- I can push it to 2001. I'll push it to 2001. Uh, they were writing the best games, for sure. Nowadays, like, every release, it's, it has to be taken at its own merit, because it could be anything. They could be ripping you right off. Look at Final Fantasy Origins. That's a piece of garbage. I mean, you can't trust just because it came from Japan that it's going to be better written. In fact, a lot of times, they, they will... Uh, cut corners with writing to the point where they actually, like, don't do it. Like in Final Fantasy XII, they cut the fuck- the, they cut the writer out of the whole process. And, uh, he basically quit and they didn't bother to-